Our next speaker, Greg Orloff, is with the CSA Group. Greg? Am I on? Oh, there we go. Good afternoon. My name is Greg Orloff. I'm the Government Relations Officer for CSA Group. And I'd like to start by thanking Case Western and all the other sponsors for inviting us here today to participate in this workshop. I think this is a fabulous topic. Uh, you may or may not realize yet, but I hope you do by the end of the day, uh, to actually address the topic of conformity assessment and standards in an engineering environment. So, so kudos to everyone who pulled this together. Great effort. I'm going to give you a brief overview of CSA Group, uh, just, just a small little bit of snippets, and then I'm going to try and chum the water if I can a little bit uh, and get us into some uh, dicey topics around the topics and intricacies of standards so we can get a nice interactive dialogue going on. So. Without further ado, if I don't mess up my, uh, oh, flapping back there. Give me some more credit there. This one. All right, CSA's organization, uh, our mission is to provide or create a better, safer, more sustainable world where standards work for people and business. Um, you know, we're not a new organization by any means, uh, but at a high level, what we do to support that vision is we have three areas where we conduct business. We essentially do product performance testing, where you're evaluating a product against uh, maybe manufacturer's claims, things along those lines. We certify products against applicable standards. It could be ours, it could be underwriter laboratories, it could be um, ASTMs. And then we also write standards. So we're an SDO, as you heard a little bit about before as well. This will just give you an idea of where we are globally as an organization. Um, we're headquartered right across the pond uh, up in Toronto, Canada. And our US headquarters are just south, about 20 minutes from Cleveland in Independence, Ohio. Just from a, I guess, a capability standpoint, I'm not going to read you guys uh, the stuff that's on this slide, but this will give you an idea of what we do from a testing standpoint. Um, these are some of the marks that we issue as an organization. So you may be familiar with these. You may have seen them on some of your household appliances. Uh, back to your barbecue grills when you're out there grilling at the, uh, the frat parties and such. You don't do that, do you? No keg, keg stands, keg parties? Okay. Anyway, uh, a topic that comes up uh, a lot of times uh, in standards is, is who checks the checker you know, in conformity assessment. So these organizations are out there. You hear this term SDO. That's ANSI's role. Uh, but there are a lot of accreditation bodies that are out there. Uh, these are just some of the ones that cover certifications for the North American environment. Uh, there's topics of energy efficiency that becomes a lot more and more in the limelight in today's day and age. Uh, so you'll see some of the organizations that do that too. Do I want to turn the toggle keys on? No. Where's your keyboard? I don't want to turn the toggle keys. Okay, there we go. We pause for technical difficulties. And once again, just real quickly, uh, some of the international accreditation bodies and recognitions. So that being said, let's talk about standards and why everyone in this room should care about them. You guys know what a standard is? You've heard a lot of babbling up here from us, but uh, anyone care to throw out a thought or a whim or a concern? Don't all jump at once. All right, fine. I'll, I'll spoon it to you. you know, it's basically a document that tells you how to do, say, make, test, organize, or design something. Uh, OK, so what? Right? Well, standards are a baseline. It's a minimum set of criteria for a product or a process. And essentially, it's a living document. So it evolves as products evolve throughout time. You know, so, so why is this important to you as engineers? Uh, good questions. Because most likely, you're going to be working at some time in the not too distant future. Uh, whoever's footing your bills is probably hoping that's sooner than later. Um, but you're probably going to have the uh, potential to work on a product that has to apply with a standard. You may even have the dubious honor of working on a new emerging technology where there are no standards yet, and you can be in the forefront of developing standards for those documents. So it's an extremely relevant topic that uh, doesn't get addressed to a, to a full level or extent oftentimes in engineering and technical schools. So we've heard a little bit about um, the accreditation process and then some a little bit of conversation about the World Trade Organization and technical barriers to trade. Um, ANSI is, is the organization that actually complies with that from an accreditation standpoint in the US. Uh, there's a guiding document in there uh, that we use. It's called ANSI's Essential Requirements, uh, Due Process Requirements for American National Standards, that every one of the organizations on this stage that's represented has to abide by those, those guidelines and, and rules for engagement. 
just a couple of figures around that, uh, that comment. Uh, Annex 3 spells out the details that essentially you cannot make a technical document or a standard, a barrier to trade between countries. And some of the statistics that we've got on the board here kind of highlight the benefits that can happen to countries uh, and even regions uh, in North America or Europe, things along those lines, uh, direct economic benefits to society when those things are followed. So in summary, you know, standards can be used to accomplish many different things. Uh, they can establish designs to prevent injury, uh, to laying out technical approaches for verifying energy efficiency, to define proper care techniques for, for medical environments and care, uh, to defining new approaches for topics like cybersecurity. And with that, I think I will close, and uh, thank you for your time. <laughs>